What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D here. Welcome back to Something to Consider. In this episode, I wanted to walk you all through the evolution of giving my feelings a voice. It sounds really nice, doesn't it? Like evolution, anything when you put evolution in front of anything, it just sounds... (laughs) I don't want to say extreme, but it just, it it sounds like a big thing that's happening, right? And it's true. Giving my feelings a voice has been transformative in how I show up in my life and in my relationships. And I have a formula now that I use in situations to give my feelings a voice that enables me to feel empowered while also giving an opportunity for someone to receive that. So my feelings and I have had a tumultuous relationship for a large part of my life. I'm not entirely sure where the breakdown happened when I stopped listening to my feelings and started dismissing and minimizing them. But I can tell you this, something that I have learned the hard way is that you can try as much as you want to dismiss and minimize your feelings and shame yourself for feeling a certain kind of way. But until you address those things and give them a voice, they will only become louder and they will only become more prominent. And then for me, certain actions and behaviors start becoming maladaptive because as much as I keep trying to shove these feelings down, I can only do that for so long before things start bubbling up to the surface and to the surface and other things start happening that reflect something else going wrong. And so for me, when I think about my relationship to my feelings earlier on in life, Where this has come up a lot, probably is no surprise, in my romantic relationships. I've learned that romantic relationships are a place where where whatever you are trying to hide from will become revealed. Whatever parts of yourself you have not healed will become revealed. And I think it's because, at least for me, when I've gone into potential relationships, I'm looking to join my life with someone. And so there are things that maybe is easy to hide for myself. For may, There are things that are, are perhaps easy to hide from myself that are more of a challenge to hide from someone else because this is someone else with their own life, their own lens, their own way of looking at things. So something for me may be very normalized, But for them, it could be something that is odd and vice versa. There could be things that they're doing that are normal to them that they don't question that I look at and I'm like, hmm, that doesn't seem quite normal, at least not for me. And so how this has shown up in romantic relationships is I have identified for the longest with the anxious, preoccupied attachment style. If you have not heard about attachment styles, I will have links in the show notes. I actually have some YouTube videos where I've talked about my experience with this particular attachment style, and I do plan on doing an episode going into more detail around it, but at least in terms of this episode, having that attachment style was something that caused me to show up in an anxious way, and so... I would do things or say things that when I, looking back, I was not necessarily proud of and just constantly in a state of survival mode and trying to avoid being abandoned. And so if you can imagine if you're in a state of mind where you're in survival mode, you're going to do and say things that aren't necessarily things that you're proud of or that you would do if you were in your best frame of mind, right? And so for me, I think I've shared this in a previous episode of when I was speaking to my one of my former therapists, she had me go through an exercise where 
She had me speak to my younger self. And through that exercise, it was about taking accountability for my needs and for my wants and and all of that and my feelings. And that exercise turned out to be transformative to me because it also became a gateway for me to now start, for me to, to now begin expressing myself hopefully without hesitation for me to start doing that right and really looking to and listening to my feelings when I was dealing with a guy in a former relationship he embodied the person who he reflected to me what I was doing to myself so he would dismiss and minimize and just outright ignore my feelings and sometimes it would escalate to the point where I was really upset and just in tears and visibly breaking down emotionally and he would more often than not have no kind of response to it and sometimes like I said he would just flat out ignore it and I remember in those situations how I would feel, I would feel a lot of shame because I would feel like there was something wrong with me. I would feel like for me being overwhelmed like this, there is an issue with me versus now if I if I get even a hint of anxiety with someone, I like to take a step further and look into what is happening fully in that situation before jumping to there's something wrong with me. I've learned that there's nothing wrong with feelings. Feelings are not wrong. (laughs) And anyone who tries to make you feel bad for how you feel has their own things that they need to grapple with. Shaming ourselves does not help us to deal with and address what we are feeling. And sometimes It is enough to just sit with a feeling rather than trying to make it go away or trying to act like it doesn't exist. Feelings are never the issue. How we feel is never the issue. The issue can be in how we react to those feelings. So for me, in this particular situation with a former guy I was dating, There was nothing wrong with me feeling anxious. It came out later, that anxiety was actually my intuition telling me something's off here. But because I am the type of person who is very logic oriented and likes data and likes facts and growing up, I liked math because there was one answer, (laughs) you know, being someone with that personality type and then going into date, going into dating and not having hard facts and data that can give me a reason to be anxious. It's almost like I was holding my breath waiting to see something. But what's sad is even when I did see the behaviors, it still was hard for me to get out of that. It still was hard for me to walk away from that. And so what has happened since I did that exercise in therapy where I took responsibility for my needs and my feelings is that I have found myself showing up more authentically and I have also found myself with the ability to say you know what if I'm anxious about something but I don't have proof of it I don't have to have proof to decide that I don't want to be in this situation now this doesn't mean that every situation I'm anxious in that I walk away I'm not giving that blanket statement but I've learned if early on into dating, something just doesn't quite feel right, that is enough of a reason to walk away. That can be enough of a reason. And I don't have to explain myself to anybody. As a courtesy, you know, the type of person I am, if I, you know, have respect for the the person that I'm interacting with, I will share something like that with them. But to be honest, <laughs> as soon as I've stepped into that frame of mind where I'm like you know what this feeling is enough for me more often than not something happens where things fizzle out with that person anyways and I don't even need to say that I feel like it's almost maybe it's more of a spiritual thing where it's I went through so I'm jumping around a little bit here but there was another guy that I dated recently and I remember similarly having this anxious feeling 
and I didn't really know what to do with it. But then a light bulb went off in my head and I was like, you know what? The last time that you felt this way, you decided to to move forward and you see how much of a disaster that was. And with this feeling and with other things that had happened and conversations I had with him, I resolved in my mind that I was done, that I did not want to date this person anymore. And I don't think this person, I still don't think this person is a bad person. It's just, there was an uneasiness that I felt. And sure enough, as soon as I made that decision, the very next day, the same guy texted me and said, and you know, and told me basically he would like for us to be friends instead and it was just an affirming situation for me now I opted to not be friends for my own reasons and I shared that with him but it was very affirming for me that like this is not going the way I this is not going the way I want it to go this is not going towards a path of peace I'm feeling uneasy in this situation I need to get out and I planned to tell him that but he reached out to me before I was in a space to reach out to him. And so it was just affirming, like all of it, like I was sad about it, but I knew that that's when it needed to happen. And the thing is, as soon as I made that decision mentally, I felt peace, complete peace. Up until that, I was in my head and trying to figure it out logically. And I was reminded of that former situation that I just mentioned and was like, nope, this is enough of a reason. And I completely felt peace afterwards so something for you all to consider is where are those areas in your life if there are areas in your life where you feel like you have not given your feelings a chance to speak where are those areas where logic pretty much 99% of the time takes precedence over your, over your feelings. Where is it that you've learned that your feelings don't matter or matter very little? And something else I'd like to add here is this isn't me saying that feelings are the end all be all because feelings can be flighting, right? They can go up and down and left and right. They're never stable, but completely dismissing them, ignoring them and minimizing them is also not the way to go. I think it would be better to have a union between our feelings and our and our logic brain, right? And what we think of things and how we feel about things. And I acknowledge that these things won't always align. And this is why this is something that is very personal, I think, to each person. I can't give blanket statements and say, always go with your mind or always go with your feelings. But I can say from my experience that because I am someone who is more oriented towards the logical mind, that giving my feelings a voice, even if it doesn't change the outcome of things, is still more of a balanced approach to my life that feels better and more intuitive for me. So with that, I want to thank you all for listening and I'll talk to you all in the next one.